It's a great joy to welcome you again to Kanguka. My name is Chris Ndikumana and today is Wednesday. I would like to speak once again on the topic of preparing yourself in the morning before you start your day. How do you prepare yourself? How do you pray? I hope that everyone who's been listening to Kanguka for a while knows that you can't leave your home without praying. If you're still leaving your home without praying, you still don't understand what the start of a new day means. If you just wake up and leave for work without praying, without talking to I am, it means that you just consider the new day to be a day like any other day. For you, there is no difference between the days. Today is like yesterday or the day before because nothing changes. The sun rises up and makes way to the night and the cycle repeats. You feel like it's the same thing every day. But let me remind you that every day is unique and every day was created. The same way that you were created, days are also created. If you're listening to me in the morning, you need to know that the day ahead was created by I am. That's why spiritually awakened people prepare themselves before they leave their homes. The word of God says in Psalm chapter 121 verse 3 that he will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. I am doesn't sleep. His eyes are on you. He is with you. I want you to know that when you wake up in the morning, I am expects you to prepare your day. That's why the verse says that he won't allow your foot to be moved. Because when you prepare your day, you're able to walk with him. Even if you encounter some problems, you're able to face them because he fights for you and he's the one who gives you victory. I will say it again. When you prepare your day, you may still face hardships. But I am knows about your problems even before they occur. And he has already prepared a solution for your problems before they happen. That's why you need to prepare your day by lifting it up to I am. You don't know what's going to happen during the day, but I am knows. Further down in the same chapter, Psalms chapter 121 verse 7 says, The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. Your soul is made of your mind and your emotions. I am preserve your soul. When you prepare your day, he will protect you. He will keep you safe from any harm. Even if harm comes your way, he will fight for you. He will be with you and nothing can surprise him because he knows everything. I want you to understand that I am knows everything, but when you prepare your day through prayer, you inviting the angels of I am to come and start the day with you. You need to understand that the angels of I am are waiting for your prayers in the morning. They are waiting to hear you praise and give thanks to I am and put the day ahead in his hands. Preparing the day is to place it in the hands of I am knowing that he knows everything that's going to happen and he has the last word in every situation you may face many problems during the day but because you started your day with prayer and you place your day in the hands of I am you won't be afraid when the problems come even if you face big problems you're not afraid because you know that I am knows about them there is a listener of Kanguka who impressed me she went to the doctor for some test and she was told that they found cancer in her body right away she said to God you knew about this medical report there's nothing new to you I know that I always prepare my day and I know that you have an answer to this problem she had supernatural peace and the doctor Doctors were amazed at her reaction. She had the assurance that I am has her life in his hand. I urge you to prepare your day in the morning so that when you leave your home, you too can know that your whole life and the whole day are in the hands of I am. It's now time to continue the teaching on Thanksgiving. Yesterday we were looking at Psalms chapter 34 verse 1. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times and His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Why do we bless the Lord? We bless Him because our Thanksgiving touches His heart. He desires our Thanksgiving. 
I have a message for everyone listening to me now. You need to know that you have something that you can give thanks for. There is something that God has done in your life that you can give Him thanks for. If I am has done something for you, He expects words of thanksgiving from your mouth. He doesn't expect them just a couple days. You need to give Him thanks every day. With every breath you take, every meal you eat, every strength in you, every moment you alive, I am expects you to give Him thanks. There is absolutely nothing more valuable that you can offer I am than words of praise and thanksgiving. Giving money to his work is a good thing because you are honoring him but the money belongs to him in the first place. The whole earth belongs to him. Anything that you could give him belongs to him. There is nothing you can give him that he doesn't already have. Even if you give him your body or your house, they belong to him already. But thanksgiving is the one thing you can offer to him that he can't offer to himself. That's why thanksgiving is so important. Ayam's heart longs for thanksgiving. His heart is thirsty for your thanksgiving. The last couple of days, I focused on Psalms chapter 34. I explained how we can give thanks every day. I told you that in order to achieve it, you need to follow the first guiding principle of Kanguka, which is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. Once you're able to apply that principle, it becomes easy to give thanks in everything. The reason we don't give thanks in everything is because we don't accept the things we're going through. We're not happy about our situation because it's different from what we want and we start complaining. But once you accept your circumstances, no matter how they are, it's very easy to give thanks in everything. Your mouth should always be filled with thanksgiving because we were created to praise God. Yesterday, I told you that in heaven, the the angels are constantly praising God. When I wake up in the morning, I like to think about the angels who are praising God. When you late for a social function with a group of friends, you want to hurry up to join them. That's because you feel like you're missing out on the fun they are having without you. I feel the same way when I go to pray in the morning. I know that the angels are praising God. They are worshiping Him. They are experiencing His glory. So I want to hurry up to join them. Personally, in my prayer time, I spend more time giving thanks to God. A friend of mine once asked me to describe how I pray. I told my friend that I spend 80 to 90% of my time praising I am, speaking of His majesty, His love, and lifting up His holy name. My hope is that by the end of this teaching, your prayer life won't be the same. Maybe you used to go before God and talk for three hours about your problems, or you just spend all your time rebuking demons. Yes, there is a time to rebuke demons, but you need to spend the majority of your time attracting God's glory. Don't spend your time crying in despair. If you have problems, you can lift them up to Him. Hear me well. Crying isn't a bad thing. You can cry in His presence. You can pour out your heart to Him. You can talk about your problems. There is nothing wrong with that. But the first thing you need to bring in His presence is a heart that's full of thanksgiving. It doesn't mean that everything is well, but it means that you've understood that you were created to offer thanksgiving to I am, and that's the first thing he desires to receive from you before you bring anything else. Let me tell you that when you offer thanksgiving, your prayers are heard better than the prayers of those who go before God with complaints, talking only about what's wrong in their lives. Thanksgiving touches the heart of I am. In verse 3 of the same chapter, Psalm chapter 34, verse 3, he says, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. We need to magnify the Lord. We need to talk about his majesty and how big he is. We also need to exalt him, which is to lift him up. I want you to understand two important things, to magnify and to exalt I am. Many people ask me, how can you magnify God? He's already big. It's true that he is big, but let me tell you that he is not big in the eyes of some people. He's big in heaven, but he may be small in your heart. Do you know how can you tell if I am is big or small in your eyes? 
Look at the way you talk about him. Look at your attitude in prayer and how you believe in him. When you praise God and you declare how big he is, when you exalt his name and you speak of his power, it means that I am is getting bigger in your life. He's getting bigger in your heart. You're going to experience many breakthroughs because of how you speak about him in your prayers. This is very important and I will continue to explain it tomorrow. May I am bless you. Have a great day. If you want to repent or you want to talk to a man of God, you can call or write a WhatsApp message on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.